Okay, welcome everybody. It is Wednesday afternoon and I am so happy to be here. It's been quite a while since I did a live training and I am coming at you with something I think pretty cool. So I want to give you a little backstory. The title of this training is how I am growing my business without social media and how you can too. So let me give you a little backstory on why I'm even doing this. So you may remember months ago, I said that I think it was September. I did um, a month without Instagram and the things that happened during that month were pretty remarkable. I grew as a person. My business grew. I got more clients. I became so focused. I felt my faith grow. I felt my belief in myself and my business grow in addition to my belief in how God was guiding me. And then in October, I dabbled with going back onto to social media just a little bit. I didn't go on. Um, I didn't post a lot at all. I think I posted in my feed one time, and that was to announce that I'm going to be a speaker at the Thrive Summit for women in business um, or women thrive yeah, Women in Business, Women Thrive Summit, which is going to be in March. And you'll hear me talk about that like over the course of the next few months because it's it's a pretty big deal. Um, it's an international organization. There, it's it was a huge honor to be selected um after the interview process. So I posted about that and that was it. I was in my stories a little bit. And I didn't feel that need, I didn't feel that drive, I didn't feel that hunger to go back on to Instagram. And then in late October, beginning of November, I was praying about it. I was like, you know, I really don't feel like I should be on Instagram. I felt like there was a lot of negative energy there. I felt like I was looking at what other people were doing for guidance versus depending on God to guide me. I felt like when I'd get off of it, I had just negative energy. I felt I felt exhausted. I didn't feel inspired and enlightened and energized and motivated the way that I wanted to be uh, when it came to my business. And, you know, part of that was, I guess, self-development that I needed to mature and not let those things bother me. Maybe it doesn't bother anybody else, but I hear more and more people say that they do get sucked into that doubt after they've been on the platform. It's hard not to when you see all of these people saying all these great things they've done and we forget, we forget ourselves, what we've accomplished. We forget how God has used us in other people's lives. We forget how incredible we are and how our expertise is needed out into the world when we see all these other people raving about what they've done and how the end, um, you know, how much money they're making and all of these things. So this is what happened that led me to completely go off of off of Instagram and not be on there at all now. And it was a God wink because what happened was um, I was go, you know, reading my emails one day and a former mentor of mine, Steph Gass, who's been on the podcast, I've been on her show. Um, she's just a remarkable human and a very strong Christian businesswoman and entrepreneur who is making just incredible headway for the ripple effect of good in the world and helping women build podcasts or launch podcasts that are successful and really, you know, impacting so many levels of human lives in terms of faith. And so anyway, I'm rambling on about stuff, but really what this is about is the fact that God sent me a message she had been off of social media for a long time, off of Instagram. She uses her Facebook group just like I am, but she had been off of Instagram for a long time, but her team was still posting her podcast episodes on Instagram. Well, she was praying one morning and it, you guys aren't even going to believe this story. She was praying one morning and God gave her a download to say, get off of Instagram. So she shares this story. It pops up in my email, right? And it was the same day that I had been journaling around getting off of Instagram and God had given me a specific Bible verse that led me to believe that I was absolutely not meant to be on Instagram. That was not the platform for me to use to grow my business. And I received that message from Stephanie and I was like, oh my gosh, 
God has a really funny way of telling us, like almost hitting us over the head when we're not getting things ourselves to listen to him, to believe in him, to trust him. And I will be perfectly honest. I still have that slight pull to go back to Instagram and just see what's going on and see what I'm missing. And, and then I have those doubts creep in that, well, maybe I need to be on there to grow my business. But here's the thing, you guys, when I made that decision, I had the biggest month of the year in November financially, as well as, you know, new clients, new everything. It was remarkable. So there's no doubt in my mind that I made that right decision, that I followed what God was leading me to do. So I wanted to give you that backstory so that you can understand why I'm coming to you today to tell you what I'm doing. So, and I really want to speak to those people who maybe they don't know where to begin to start their business or to grow their business. Maybe you feel like you've been spinning in circles. You're doing the same thing over and over and over, and you're not getting results. You're not growing. You're not seeing changes for good in your business. You're not having the impact, the meaningful impact, the positive impact that you want to have with your clients or just in the world in general. So all of those, those things are, are um, can be impacted by what we're doing, how we're spending our time, what content we're consuming. And that's why I had to get off of Instagram because it wasn't fueling me. It wasn't helping me. And it wasn't giving me the opportunity to make the impact that I want to make. And so when I went off, God really told me, showed me how, okay, if you trust me, I will provide. If you trust me, I will get you to where you want to go. And so that's where that's where all of this is stemming from. So if you are someone who is struggling with knowing where to go, where to begin, what steps to take, what in what order, then this is going to help you because you don't have to spend all your time putting all your eggs in this social media basket, expecting to get results there when there are other ways to do it. So if that's not fueling you, if it's not blessing you, if it's not drawing clients into you, you don't have to do it just because everybody else is doing it. And because all the experts say that you have to be on social media in order to grow a business, because it's not true. And here are the steps that I am using, the things that I am doing, the tools, the, 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 the powerful um, ways that I am growing my business without Instagram. So I say social media because I really don't use Facebook that much either. I, I like to do the group, which I really have not been that faithful with here in the group. Um, I, I'm hoping to do now like a series of lives and really get into serving you here in this group. But the, the biggest thing for me, I will tell you, is my email list. I love to serve up incredible content on my email list. So if you haven't joined the email list yet, I encourage you to do so. Um, just put it in the comment and I will that you want to join and I'll give you the link or I can put the link even in a comment too. And I'll do that after, after um, the recording stops. But, and if when this airs on the show notes or on YouTube, I will actually put the link there as well. So that anyone who wants to join the email list can, because that's where I really, I really spend a lot of my, my time focusing on and putting a lot of energy, I should say into that um, platform. All right. So with all of that said, Let's dive into the ways, the tools, the things that I'm using to grow my business. Number one was my mindset. Number one was really doing the work so that I can could get to know God better, start to trust him more, have more belief in him, more belief in myself, trust him more, trust myself more, and be patient with his timing. His timing is limitless. His timing is perfect. Mine is not. And I had a lot of demands. I had a lot of expectations that weren't realistic because they weren't in line with his timing. So that was lesson number one for me. And doing that mindset work has transformed my business. And the reason it's transformed my business is because our thoughts produce our results. When we have positive thoughts, we are going to feel positive. We're going to bring positive energy into the situation, into everything that we do. And we're going to pour our hearts into it in a more positive way. The more positive emotions and feelings that we have, the more we're likely to take positive, intentional, effective action in our business. 
and life for that matter, to get us to our goals. The more action we take, the more momentum we build, the more progress we have, and that becomes our cycle versus spinning in circles of not getting anywhere. And we start to have really positive results. So that was number one, growing in my faith and doing the mindset work. They went hand in hand. Number two, using a search engine optimization strategy on my website and other places as well. So using my keywords and key phrases, I read something not too long ago where the only wrong keyword research you can, the only way to do keyword research wrong is to not do it at all. So if you have not done keyword key phrase research, I encourage you to do that because SEO search engine optimization is an incredibly powerful tool for your website. Like you have to have it. So that SEO search engine optimization is applicable for every page of your website, your copy on your website and your blogging. That brings me to blogging, writing blogs and putting updates on your website weekly at a minimum is key to being able to be seen as someone who puts out value into the world. The way Google works, it needs to know that you're putting content out. It needs to know that you're there. It needs to know that if they send somebody to you, you're going to serve them. They need to know that you're going to provide value. And so the more you can put valuable content with search engine optimization on your website through blogging, the better off you're going to be. And I can tell you that blogging has been a huge, powerful part of me being able to not only educate and inspire other people, but to bring people into my world. Everybody out there is a cold lead. So we have to warm them up. We have to nurture them. And having great content on your blog is a way to do that. Having good copy on your website is a way to do that. And to bring them in, you need they need to be able to find you. And that is through the search engine optimization. So then the second thing with that, or the, I guess the third thing after, after copy, SEO, blogging, website, then it becomes Pinterest. So now that you have that great content on your blog, how are you going to drive traffic to your blog? How are you going to get people there? Okay. Yes. Search engine optimization. We talked about that, but another key part of that search engine optimization is doing Pinterest marketing. Pinterest is a search engine. I know, I know everybody thinks it's a DIY site where you go to for cupcake recipes or fashion things and all of that kind of stuff, but really it's a search engine and it is incredibly powerful. So there's a whole strategy. There's two episodes on the podcast about it. We just aired or no, one will air actually next week. Um, and the other one aired quite a while ago. It was episode 116, but the reality is Pinterest marketing is immensely powerful for driving traffic to your website, to those blog posts. The key to have in the blog post then once you drive traffic there is to have a call to action. What do you want those people to do once they get to your blog post? Why do you want to take them from Pinterest to your blog so that they can get to know you better so that you can teach them, you can nurture them. And then they have a call to action so that they know what you want them to do so that they can learn more about you, learn more about your business, learn more about how you can serve them and help them. So that call to action for me, most of the time is going to be to my email list. That brings me to email marketing, which I already mentioned how passionate I am about that and how much energy I put into that. You may think that your people don't want to hear from you and some people won't want to hear from you and that's okay because they're not your soulmate clients. If they don't want to hear from you, they don't understand the value you're providing. So that could be, there could be a couple of things happening there, right? Maybe they don't understand what you do. Maybe you haven't been clear with them. And when you are confused or when you don't have clarity, then your people are going to be confused. And confusion does not transpire or transfer over to buyers, right? We have to have confidence and trust and that trust determines buying practices. And that's where that clarity comes into play. So if you have people unsubscribing from your email list because you've emailed maybe, or your open rates are really low because you've only emailed once every couple months, once a month, and you're not doing it on a regular basis, then there are algorithms out there that these email servers have that they're going to be like, oh, well, that person only sends a message like once a month or once every other month or once every three months, then that's there. It's not going to land in your people's inbox the way you want it to. So when you see low um, open rates, when you see a lot of unsubscribes, a lot of times that's what's happening is that there hasn't been consistency there or the message hasn't been clear. So it's really important to think about an email marketing strategy. 
and how you want to communicate. This can tie back into, again, your blog. So when you think of blogging, Pinterest, and email, it comes full circle because you want to, you can even drive traffic to the blog from your email list, right? You can send an email out saying, hey, I just wrote this amazing blog, blah, 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 blah. And then um, send them to the website to, to consume the rest of the content. So email marketing is key for being front and center. The person reading your email may not buy from you today. They may not buy from you in six months, but now you're front of mind for them. So when they're having a conversation over coffee with a friend who is starting a business or whatever it is that your niche is, you're going to be front of mind and they're going to say, oh my gosh, you need to connect with so-and-so because this is exactly what they're doing. I just got an email from them today. So you can see how important it is to stay front and center and be consistent with what you're putting out into the world and how frequently you're doing it. Um, so the other thing is podcasting. I mentioned earlier on about how that's how I got connected with Stephanie Guest and how the important influence she's had on my journey in terms of being a Christian entrepreneur, being having my faith front and center in my business, not hidden behind my business and, you know, really being the person that I am. But podcasting gives you the ability to warm the audience. It gives you the ability to grow trust. It gives you the ability to be a true authority in your area of expertise. So podcasting is another great way that I am growing my audience and growing opportunities for my business and getting more clients. Super, super amazing. And once you get into podcasting, it the, the level of work is not as dramatic and taxing as you would think it is. It, it does take quite a bit of effort, but it's not, you really, you really fall in love with it. You really grow a lot of opportunities and it helps you become an authority and an expert in your area of um, expertise, your niche. So it really does, does help you. It's helped me tremendously. And the other thing that that does then is it also opens the doors to meet other podcasters or other experts who then want to bring you into their realm. And when people bring you into their realm, like through PR, podcast guesting, publishing an article for you on their platform, if they trust you, their people are going to trust you. So it's another way to grow your audience. It's another way to grow trust. And it's another way to bring more people into your world to then convert them over to clients. Speaking engagements is another thing. I used to be absolutely terrified as, of public speaking. You can read about that in my book, You Me and Anxiety, or there's it's been mentioned in podcast episodes numerous times, but um, that has become an immense opportunity building platform because when you're speaking to someone in an or you know through um like a conference or a small group presentation even through summits the more you're out there and the more people see you and they get to know you and they understand what you do and how you can serve them they feel your energy they and they, they can really begin to trust you just through that speaking opportunity. You can also sell straight from the stage. So those that's another way of growing your audience and then gaining opportunities to grow your business. So in, an, in a nutshell, actually, first, I'm going to add one more bonus thing, and that's YouTube. If you don't want to be on Instagram and you don't want to be caught just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, because they do tend to suck time. They tend to suck energy. YouTube is a great platform. You can do videos on, on YouTube. I publish all my podcast episodes on YouTube and YouTube does drive traffic back to my website because of the podcast episodes, the show notes, um, even like this video will go there. So it's just another opportunity, another platform to repurpose content to, or to use it as your platform for gaining more eyes on your business because it's a search engine, just like Google is. So when we think about search engine optimization and search engine capabilities, we have your website, we have Google, we have Pinterest, we have YouTube. So those are major traffic driving resources for you to grow your audience and get more clients. Then we have blogging. The blogging strategy is key. Again, you want to always have a call to action and the call to action can be to grow your email list. It could be to book a call with you. I encourage you to not invite people right away to book a call with you because they really do need to get to know you, love you, and trust you before they buy from you. And in order to do that, you want to warm them up. So bring them into your nurture sequence on your email list. And that's a great way to do that. 
And then you have your things like, well, and actually, you know what, I'm going to back up for just a second because then there's podcasting. And so for me, like podcasting, I can create blogs out of those podcast episodes. And so could you, if you had a podcast or have a podcast, and then that becomes a search engine um, optimized. And it's another way to drive traffic to your website. Cause once people are on your website and they start consuming your content, they're going to, they're going to follow around, um, your, your site map. So if you have a blog post and you're hyperlinking to another, another blog post and so on and so forth, you can bring people around your website, kind of guide them what you want them to consume so they can get to know you more and then trust you more as well. So, and then, you know, you've got your PR opportunities, like being a guest on another podcast, writing for a journal, the publication, like I said, when people trust you, trust the person that's having you or publishing you or sharing you, they're going to trust you. And then you have your opportunities through speaking. So those are the ways that I am growing my business without being on Instagram 24 seven or feeling like I'm married to it or having, you know, getting stuck in those moments of just scrolling mindlessly. I'm using my energy. I'm using my brain power. I'm using my gifts that God has called me to use to help other women start and grow businesses in ways that fuel me, that have powerful ROI. And most of these things that I'm doing with the exception of the podcast editing and podcast hosting, these are free. I'm not spending money to do this stuff. So this is these are incredible opportunities for you to start planting the seeds with your audience that this is what you're doing, this is how you're doing it, and really put the effort and intention into these things because you will start to see growth, you will start to see results, just like I am. I hope you guys have found this super helpful. I hope that you feel energized. I have to tell you that the Purpose to Results Academy, the inaugural program will be launching in January. And I this is the basis of it. This is the basis of that program. So if you are interested in learning more about that and how I'm going to be teaching all of these things in detail, this was the tip of the ice iceberg. I cannot cover all of this in, in a quick live, but if you're interested in, in any of this information, let me know. You can just email me at info at therobingram.com. I'd be happy to give you more information. You can book a discovery call with me. Um, and that link is straight away on the homepage of my website. So anything you guys need from me, just let me know. But if this sounds good to you, let's connect because I think you'll love the program. Anyway, more details on that to come because we're not launching until January anyway, but I just thought I'd drop that in that the basis of the Purpose to Results Academy will be this information, how I am building my, my business, growing my business without Instagram, without feeling doubtful, without feeling just like I don't have control, but that all of these other things are having control of me, of my mind, of my thoughts. And so I am putting God first and I am focusing on those platforms, the things that I know can truly impact other people as well as my business. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have questions, drop them in the comments or email me, like I said. And for those watching this or listening to this later, I will have a show, have show notes on the blog as well. And so you can always access all of the information there. And I will have, actually, I will link that to the Purpose to Results details, not the Academy details, but the Purpose to Results method details. So you can discover that too, if you're interested. But all of that information will be available to you just by going to the website and hitting up the blog or um, you can always just reach out. I'm here for you guys. And I feel so energized, so inspired. And I can't wait to just see what you guys think of this live and how your interest in staying on Instagram and using it to grow your business. If that's where you're growing your business, kudos to you, because I think that's a major accomplishment. I would never, ever tell someone to get off of it if it's working for them. But if you're like me and you don't enjoy it, you feel like it's taxing and draining you and just almost suffocating you. I'd love to hear about that too, because I think there's a lot more of us than, um, we think, I don't think we're alone in the, in these feelings and, and how that 
platform uh, and social media in general just brings in that doubt and comparison. And listen, we were created in Jesus' image. So we're not meant to sit in a place of doubt and fear and comparison. We're meant to trust and believe and get out and show up for those people that are just waiting for us to show up to serve them. All right, I'm going to close out for now, but I wish you all a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. And I can't wait to hear from you to see what your thoughts are on the possibility of growing a business without social media.